So, before I forget... Open for business. Strangers in the night, exchanging glances. Thanks, Neo Mayo, for the follow. And... Open for business. Strangers in the night, exchanging glances. Thanks, Steve... Summer? For the follow? Or is it Steve's MMR? I'm never sure when it's a bunch of letters and no vowels. Either way. I think when I last left off, we uh, taking care of the Pumpkin King and we're moving to the Sleepy Village. So I'm really hoping we get to Science of Shields Man. If I can remember where the hell that is. There we are. Sleepy Village is probably the stage that I remember the least. Because I just remember getting lost here a lot when I played the original. Let's see, I have the longbow and the hammer. You know what? I'll roll with that. Poor villagers. The master possesses them. It mustn't hurt them. Hurt guards, though. They seek out an object of great power. Right, so you cannot hurt the villagers. Forgot about that. That was the most annoying part of the whole stage. A crucifix once stood here, but the mayor took it. Find a replacement and see how the church should really look. Vague as ever. Okay. Sorry. I forgot how to do the daring dash. And we are getting lots of the little girl with the axe. The rune key is held aloft by the flow of water from the fountain. You may have to wait for the next drought. You know, I'm so glad the mother still does that. I mean, I do miss the la 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 la, but this is good too. La 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 la. I don't know about you, but I have a hankering for some troll's head about now. Ah, crap, the villagers got an axe to grind.
Blacksmith's Monthly. Old man Willie Green of Gallowstown was awarded Smithy of the Season by our readers. His outstanding casts have produced many intricate and hard-wearing iron goods and sculptures. Willie only uses the finest of metals in his work and is particularly noted for his magnificent busts. <laughs> Old man Willie was quoted as saying, Aye, when I get pumping on me bellows, there's no stopping me. It's all in the rhythm, up and down, up and down. I've always been inspired by the stories of Stanya Iron Hewer, <laughs> the greatest smithy there ever was. The guy who gave me the hammer. Yeah, it's not going to do anything because we don't have a cast. Okay. I'm platforming on things I shouldn't be platforming on. Uh, there's the old man. I'm not going to use the life fountain yet. Trying to remember where everything is. Of course, that's insinuating that I knew what I was doing in the first place. Guess I'm not getting that chalice. Wait a minute. It makes sense that Dan can't swim. You're telling me that girl couldn't swim? Curse you in your limited sight line.
I must do taught me. Bust of Mr. Shanks, landlord of the Trolls Head. To clean the statue, look. <laughs> Closer than I wanted it to be. can live rat Oh that kid's going to be waiting for me Hurry comrades tear this place apart if we don't find the shadow artifact, Lord Zarak will have us mocking out the demons for the next millennium. Ooh, that was a rough camera cut. Wait, 66%? That's the first, like, legit thing that I've killed. Everything. Still good? Still good. Right, Chaos Rune. History of Galomir, Volume 1. During the dark time that was Galomir's not too distant past, it was King Peregrine who thwarted Zerok the Necromancer and his plan to enslave the land. Zerok, once the king. Sorry, I'm just in the mic a little bit. Out of favor with the ruler for conducting outlandish experiments on the bodies of the dead. It was said that deep within Peregrine Castle, the dead were restless. The dead are to be honored, not kept as the playthings of alchemists, declared King Peregrine as he banished Zerok from the castle. 
all of Xerox's living dead were routed out and destroyed. Xerox, being an unforgiving soul, went into hiding and vowed to wreak his revenge on the king. History of Galamir, Volume 2. Rumors of ill-doing and dark deeds abounded through the land of Galamir. It was whispered that Zerok had employed... Why do we need this low-angle back shot on Serdan? Under the cover of night, Zerok's dark army spilled forth from their corrupt haven. The army marched south across the Silver Mountains and through the Silver Woods. Soon afterwards, even the pumpkin lands belonged to Zerok. The folk of Gallows Town cried out for help. Save us, good King Peregrine. Retaliation was swift and violent. King Peregrine's forces, led by the brave Sir Fortescue, drove Xerox's army back from Gallows Town. Oh, there was much rejoicing, but the war was not yet over. History of Galomir, Volume 3. Yes, you sit down, villager, while I regale myself with shit that happened after this character died. Zarok could march west to take the enchanted forest. This sacred place would prove a bitter defeat if it fell into the hands of the evil sorcerer. It was Sir Dan Fortescue who once again led the king's militia to rid the demon host from the land. Yet the evil wizard was cunning and had prepared an ambush. Titanic battle ensued, of which history has never seen the like. It is said that the day would have gone to Zero, but for the skill and valor of one man. Fortescue led the charge deep into the massed ranks of the undead, felling Zerok's bodyguard, the fearful Lord Cardo. And before finally succumbing to his own mortal wounds, slew the traitorous sorcerer with a mighty sweep of his sword. Oh, I am all about the deepest lore for this, Blondie. Particularly when it leads to me getting hit immediately afterward. History of Galamir, Volume 4. The forces of evil were destroyed, but at a terrible price. None but a handful of the king's militia returned from that field. Galamir lost a whole generation of young men that day, including Canny Tim, the legendary Cosmo, oh. and Fortescue's second in command, who fell in the first volley of error. They reversed them for what actually happened. I completely forgot about that. An unmarked grave, then no one in Galamir would shed a tear. The shadow demons that had fallen under Xerox's banner were unnatural creatures that did not belong in the world of mortal men. The king declared that they be banished, entombed under the oh. pure earth. Oh, meanwhile, in a completely different game... ...within an impregnable box of the king's design, the demons were buried deep underground. Their tomb was sealed with a magical device that has since come to be known as the Shadow Artifact. Well, for this, for the other one, he was just waiting. For this one, he just froze in time. And he didn't go after me at all. Part one. The land of Galamir is a wondrous land of breathtaking sights and adventure. If it's beauty you are looking for, be sure to check out the sights of the Enchanted Forest. Scale the heights and see the nests of giant dragon birds. Seek out weird and wonderful plant life. Go ooh and ah at the sight of baby dragon toads splashing about in the crystal clear ponds. Why not take a walk through the pumpkin valley? Pumpkin is Galomir's favorite dish, and about now the valley is just bulging under the weight of young podlings awaiting harvest. Yeah, I didn't intend to remind you of the Monster Hunter World Iceborne update, but there you go. If it's mystery you're looking for, then the seasoned adventurer should travel to the ruins of King Peregrine's castle. Yes, this is the fortress from which the fabled King Peregrine once hailed. It is said that the king's crown was lost in the dungeons below the castle, and that the ghost of the region himself 
now haunts these cold stone passageways. Spooky. Why not take the swamps and seek out the mythical town of Mellowmead? This place was once said to be a place of fantastical arcane alchemy, but an age has passed since it was consumed by the murky swamps. Perhaps great treasure awaits any adventurer that can locate its watery resting place. <laughs> Heroes from History, a retrospective. Chapter 1. In addition to being the strongest man who ever lived, Stanier Ironhewer was unsurpassed in his skill as a blacksmith. He was equally happy pounding on his anvil at home as he was pounding on someone's head in battle. It was said that his only fear was the end of the village smithy as the focus of manufacture in favor of more centralized units. <laughs> As if. Chapter two. Okay, Before there it goes. Peasant to one of the nomadic I was wondering when the voiceover would kick in again. Bloodmanoth Skullcleaver gathered an army of horsemen and swept over half the civilized world. When he finally died, Attempting a single-handed attack on a garrison in the north while armed only with a spike on his helmet, he was the richest and most powerful peasant of his day. And then... Chapter 3. There you go. Carl Sterngard spent most of his formative years under siege at his family castle. With his impregnable magic shield, Sterngard's motto was, The best form of attack is defense. Sadly, his shield couldn't protect him against poor eating habits, and he died during a post-battle feast, while swallowing a large sausage he had failed to chew. Chapter 4 Truly the hero's hero. Woden the Mighty was fearless, single-minded, and uncompromising. Unbeaten in combat, he inspired raw fear in friends and enemies alike. <laughs> Not to mention in close family members and pets. Chapter 5. Trained from birth in all forms of combat, Imanzi Shongama was the warrior queen of a tribe of Amazons. The bold and the beautiful Shongama banished all males from her territory. Except the handful she kept on to mow the lawns of her people. Is that a soap opera reference? I wouldn't Chapter put it past six. them. A full-time mother and homemaker, Megwin Stormbinder had to defend her settlement from barbarian raiders while the menfolk were away on a hunting trip. She fought off repeated attacks, armed only with a pitchfork and a rolling pin, and with one arm holding her baby. Legend has it that the gods, impressed by her indomitable courage, intervened and added thunderbolts to her arsenal. She won the battle with a couple of bolts to spare on her husband when he finally returned. Chapter 7. There we go. Dirk Steadfast was a fearsome opponent thanks to his magic sword and a firmly held belief that only women defend themselves. Real men are always on the attack. He was a friend and contemporary of Karl Sterngard and was with him even to the end. It was whilst Steadfast was explaining his views on Sterngard's shield during a feast that the latter had his tragic and inexplicable accident. <laughs> Chapter 8. Descended from the finest centaur bloodstock, Raven Hooves the Archer was the last prince of his people. A proud and haughty aristocrat, he was an accomplished hunter, sportsman, duelist, playboy, raconteur, and three times derby winner. Isn't that cheating? Running a centaur in a derby? 
Or are they air butting it? Ain't no rule saying the dog can't play basketball. Captain of the militia in the time of King Peregrine, Sir Daniel Fortescue found fame when he killed the renegade wizard Zerok, a career soldier raised in the royal household. He was adored by the men under his command and renowned for his loyalty to Galamir. It was said that Fortescue was always destined for greatness. With his square jaw, steely gaze, and thick shock of hair as black as raven's wings. <laughs> he looked every inch the hero. <laughs> Lot to live up to. Dead guy. To whom it may concern, I must make haste, for Xerox men will be here within the hour. I have taken the crucifix from the church. It is the key to a key. I used the cross to make the attached cast. Then I had it destroyed. It is my hope that this cast falls into the hands of a just and good hero. Signed, the town mayor. Okay, what does it actually say? Norman's suffering of Ulcair found the tomb of Pelbon ball dreaming within the cartoon gain. We know your intention that be ye smell smocks. No you man of the book will not sit idle while we'll call to sprout about the hall. I feel like this is a literary reference that's just going way over my head. Well, either way, we got the things to make the proper cast. Now I just have to remember where in the hell that one building is. Well, I'm going to stop in the church eventually anyway, so... There we go. Oh, it counts as both the horse and the jockey. Ah, oh, that is so cheap. Next time I'm in the Hall of Heroes, I'm gonna give Bloodhoof so much shit over that. Or Ravenhoof, or whatever his name was. Dear sir and madam, on my travels across Galamir, I have come across many mysterious and enchanting finds. However, that which filled me with deepest dread was discovery of the tomb of the shadow demons. The key to their dank prison, the mysterious shadow artifact, is now in my possession. Yours fearfully, the town mayor. Mm hmm. 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 Eat more. How are you doing? I'm good. You good? I'm playing with playing this. Yeah, it's all slowly coming back to me. When was the last time you fully played through Medieval? It's been a while. I want to say at least 10 years. 
I have come so back to it in like bits and pieces since then, but I haven't like sat down and played through the entire thing. Yeah, I mean, I imagine that that was the case with a lot of people, but I, d I definitely had a a fresher take because I because I did the video on Medieval Two, so I did play through the game then, and then and then like a year later, I played the remake. I played a bit of the first Medieval when you said that. Uh... Well, when you approached me about doing stuff for that video. Oh yeah, just to give you a, a fresher idea of how to compare the two games yourself. Yeah, and I played Medieval 2 as well. Or at least some of it, if I recall. Yeah, like the first four or five levels or so. Yeah. I actually thought about doing, and I might, and I might still do it someday. Uh, doing a video on the PSP game, the PSP uh, Resurrection. Oh yeah, yeah. Because now oh. this is out. This is a more of a straight remake, while PSP, while Resurrection is more of like a kind of a reimagining. No, this isn't how I'm supposed to do it, but it's how I'm gonna do it. Do the unintentional way. Mario 64 them to death. I didn't intend to do that, but sure. Oh. <laughs> it's like you can't keep the charge during that little cutscene. <laughs> Capture that greedy. You get a lot of use of. You use the hammer quite a bit. Take him to the asylum dungeon. Well, the charge attack for that is just great. Good going over. Locate oh yeah, it is, and the water. the visual flair they add to it is nice too. Something nice. Why does Zarek always got to pick on the fat kid? I mean, it's Zarek. <laughs> okay, point taken. If I can just remember where the chalice is. Isn't it by the mayor's house or? One is the mayor's house. Yeah, admittedly, I get turned around a lot in this level. It's not a very big level. Yeah, but, but it's, it's easy it's... to. Doesn't help that the middle of the town is just a circle. Yeah, I was. That's what I was about to say. It's because the the town is basically a circle. You can easily get turned around.
I think it was like somewhere around the mayor's house, like in the yard, maybe. Oh wait, there was a brick wall back there. I just saw that. Maybe it's behind there. I was moving past that so fast I couldn't see it. Yep, there it is. There we go. I'm going to the Hall of Heroes despite pushing that kid into the pond. <laughs> or because I did that? Uh. We'll let the heroes decide. And by heroes, I mean Dan. Supernatural yo-yo. Maybe the master will make it harder to find those magic egg cups. That table's getting full. Full of all the chalices for you to knock down. Exactly. Yes, it's my favorite one. Back on the battlefield, yeah? This is good. People say to me, Stunga, what do you think of this sword or that axe? But I say to them, Nine! Modern warfare is a question of science. The science of shields. Yes. I think maybe you should take my shield, yeah? It is magic here for this cure. Some say it is better to have a magic sword than a magic shield, but I said to use it, this is rubbish! <laughs> I love this guy. It's great to hear his voice clips and impressed. Oh, that is great. Now for the important matters. Exactly, JC Lexicon. <laughs> but I say to them nine. I know I'm not going to match his level of excitability, so I'm just going to take it all the way down to one. Well, now that we have the key to the things that we absolutely shouldn't let loose, let's let loose the things that we absolutely shouldn't let loose. Except you have to, because that's just how the game is. Yeah. Oh well. I mean, if you didn't let let them loose, there'd be there'd be no one to fight in the castle level, so.
Yeah, let, let's not do ants again. You gotta listen to the ant stuff. Keep out! This gate leads to the tomb of the shadow demons. That whole book, just for that, huh? Giant magpie, the dragon bird sits upon its hoard of stolen treasures. High above the trees, you will find a nest. Oh, those eggs are worth their weight in gold. Oh yeah, uh, off topic, but uh, have you seen uh, uh, what they're adding to the uh, the NES and Super Nintendo uh, online? I have not. Well, on the Super Nintendo, they're adding Star Fox 2, for one thing. Uh-huh. So it's, it's no longer uh, Super Nintendo Classic exclusive. It was bound to happen. I had a feeling they were going to eventually add that, because it's like... They wouldn't just limit the, the official Star Fox 2 release on just that. Uh, they're also including Super Punch-Out, Kirby Superstar, and Breath of Fire 2. I'm okay with all of those. Yeah. And these two NES conclusions are interesting. They're adding Dury the Silius and Crystalis. Not bad. I could definitely vouch for Dury the Silius. Which kind of surprised me. It's like, oh, okay. But I guess Sunsoft is still around, so I guess they can still add it. Chrysalis is Sensen K. Sorry about your eggs. Bye. <laughs> oh. I mean, the eggs, the eggs didn't have actual yolks in them anyway. They were just full of just money shield and a, and a rune, so. But she loved those money shield and rune. I saw in the trailer that worried me. Let's see how it handles. What part? Still handles fine. Chalenta. The shadow demons are entombed within, separated from the world of goodness and light until the earth cracks open. 
But what part were you worried about? The, just that short little platforming section showed up in the trailer, and I'm like, okay, how does this handle? Because I'm worried that the shadow is kind of faint. And that's like, I, I can, and that was like I the can, main way to tell where you were going to land. Well, I can tell you this: the platforming, I think, overall is better. It's 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 smoother than the original, but there is one instance where it can be hard to tell where you're going to land. But that's not till like a much later level. And even then, it's like just Sit one down. section. You must take the shadow demon talisman. It is an unholy relic, but it may allow you to progress through shadow demon territory. There we go. That tile <clears throat> that tile puzzle always throws me off <laughs> for whatever reason, even though it's actually pretty simple. <laughs> well, now you released all fifty boos, and then you have to go hunt them all now. Wait, wrong game. If I remember correctly, when you're running 100% of this game, you need to get so many million coins by vacuuming up a certain amount of demons. <laughs> what have you done? Once again, the shadow demons are wreaking havoc across the land, and it's all thanks to you. The single most destructive and wretched creatures in the history of the world, and you've given them an early parole. They will be heading for the ruins of King Peregrine's castle. Galamir is doomed. Oops. I had to do it anyway. Completely unrelated, but the way these things attack kind of reminds me of like the long armed ghost from Fatal Frame. Those are games I need to get to sometime. Like, I bought them when they were on sale on PS3, like, quite a while ago. I've only played a little bit of the first game. I recommend them generally. Oh, I know. I've like, I've seen. Like videos and stuff on them, so I definitely know they're good. It's just I haven't got around to playing them enough myself. Well, Fatal Frame 2 I like, but it has a lot that pisses me off. Mm. Like one hit kill sections. Oh.
course, once, of course, after the third game, it, it'd be a bit hard to like try to play the fourth game because you would have to like, I guess, import it and be able to have it so you can actually play it. Get that Another. English patch. Yeah. Okay, that's something I don't like about just charge attacks in general, particularly with the hammer. That takes too long, or can't. No, sometimes he'll double pump and then do the attack, but it won't be the charge attack, it'll just be a regular one. Hmm. Feeling I'm gonna have to load up on arrows after this stage. There used to be a coven of witches in the caves beneath Cemetery Hill. The whole forest never smelt the same since. I thought I defeated him, he just dematerialized. Yeah, they basically like vanish and then teleport somewhere else if you do some damage to them. Wait, why? And I guess I was standing close enough to that. I guess you're just in the vicinity to use it, yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time since I did that fight. <laughs> yeah, the most dangerous part is, is when it tilts in the fall. Can we get the MXC Impact Replay for that one? <laughs> I think that would only really work on the... The, uh, Damn it! Yeah, I'm probably gonna die here. Okay. I went in down a couple life bottles anyway. Oh yeah, you only had like a couple. Yep, that got me. Ah. That's okay. Now I know everything to do. Yeah, that's true. I guess. Although I guess I guess I guess what threw people off about about this is the, you know, lack of checkpoints and stuff, which you know. You know, that's not part of that was just part of the original game design back then. 
he died in the stage, oh well. And besides, once you know the layout of the stage, you can kind of just go through it pretty quickly, so. Oh, oops. Now I'm not taking as much like cheap damage as I did before. And I won't on the desk because I realize you have to push the eggs instead of just whacking them with a the hammer. Oh yeah, your weapons won't break them, but just but just but a three foot well. drop. <laughs> Also, now that I know you can daring dash out of the way of that. Oh, come on, you were right on the edge. No! Yeah, it's kind of weird how it's like it's still like in the original game where it's just it, they just go on a straight line, and not actually have like actual physics. I think it might be more frustrating with actual physics. Probably. Separated from the world of goodness and light until the Oh no, we did it again. No, 
those ghosts are going to appear in that Fantasia video on for Night on Bog Mountain. Oh, right, other room. Shadow demons are wreaking havoc across the land, and it's all thanks to you. The single most destructive and wretched creatures in the history of the world, and you've given them an early parole. They will be heading for the ruins of King Peregrine's castle. Galamir is doomed. That explains it. It's not any specific attack they do, their mere presence drains your energy. Teleport great distances too. Definitely checking out that life fountain. And how can you use the life fountain if you're dead? You did it, Blondie. You you found the paradox that ruins the game. Clearly that's what you get for overanalyzing this game. So you sucked all the fun out of it. Where did it go? I didn't see the thing pop up. Actually, now that I do think about it, maybe the life fountains are like, in a way, the magical essence that brought the living, that brought the dead to life in the first place. Possibly. Maybe. And it's like a recharge, basically, for Dan to keep going in his, in his undead state. Glad to see you.
Hey, there we go. That's what I was waiting for. to not fuck it up. <laughs> If I want to get to that life fountain, I'll have to go through more of these things. Okay, even part of a life bottle I will take. Yeah, because that's basically an extra fall at the very least. Mm hmm. I'm trying to remember how long I got stuck on this fight when I played the original. I was going to say, yeah. Because I know this was a stopping point for me for a bit. Hmm. Who is sending me friend requests right now? What? Like on, P on, P on PS4? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's not the demons, that's for sure. I tried uh, using Daring Dash more uh, before, but I found that just caused me to charge off of the edge. <laughs> yeah, that's... I don't see a benefit to using Daring Dash on that platform. Well, I went from using all my life bottles to one. Well, that's an improvement.
Yeah, they give you a lot of life life fountains and vials up here. Oh yeah. As if they expected you to have as much health as health as you did the last time. Mm-hmm. I've had double digit chalices now, haven't I? I believe so. Yep, that's 10. We're pretty much halfway through the game now. Oh, Danielle. I've got something here I can give you, but I've no idea what it is. You fancy a little gamble, like? Speaking of gambling, I heard you were fixing races by running the derby and betting on yourself. <laughs> Which one's your chalice? I'm knocking it over. This is actually going better than I thought it would. Oh, yeah. pools of the ancient dead. Is it time for big bumping? <laughs> it's time for hope the platforming is is on point, otherwise you're gonna fall and die a lot. I mean that's a given when you have a stage like this. Yeah, but in the original it In the original, it was pretty, uh... If I, remember was... cor if I remember correctly, I actually struggled more with Enchanted Earth than I did with this. Really? Because uh, this level is usually, like, the one that, like, stresses people out. Because it's like, you have to make the some precise platforming, and if you miss, you, like, basically lose life bottles. the forces of good and the dark armies of Zarek. Now the marshes are full of the restless... Now, it's not as bad in this, but I still fell in a couple of times. <laughs> because I guess it still had to be traditional in that sense. Weapons are useless against the heavy armor of the knights. Don't let them shove you in the swamp. <laughs> that mud will never come out. Okay. Life vial insurance, good to know. Wait, well, yeah, you don't have the axe, do you? No, I don't. Because huh. usually by at this point, or at least on my second attempt, uh, visit through the the haunting grounds, uh, or haunting grounds. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, with Sir uh, Huey. Sir Huey. The Enchanted Earth. I uh, would have the axe by then. Big bumping. 
Interesting that you charge them. I usually just do a uh, charge attacks with like the sword or hammer to knock them far. I find the daring dash easier to do. Uh, I guess it would work because you're like lining yourself up to them. You just have to be careful not to like you know fall in the water with them. But I will say the axe is like useful for taking care of the tentacles and stuff that way you're not using your arrows. Yeah, but I have so many ranged weapons at this point. I could like s start using like my throwing daggers, my fire arrows, my spears. That that's true. I just I just like the axe in this game because it's a uh, pretty versatile. I use it quite a bit. Oh, I wonder how one to one this is. Because in the original, uh, if you're doing the speed run, you can do a daring dash jump to skip like a quarter of the level. Ooh. I'll test that later. <laughs> Dan is a crack shot with a longbow. I'm just taking care of all the smaller units and leaving the big bumpins. I am not going to call them anything else. I mean, sure. <laughs> It's not letting me target the tentacle. Even when within striking range. I think it's because you're targeting the, the big guys behind it. I think if you yeah, tap the... L1, you can switch targets. You can switch targets, maybe you have to log onto it there. That's okay. We'll do this the old fashioned way. I know it was in the original game too, but I love 
actually being able to see the souls fly into the chalice. Oh, that was the original game as well? Yeah, but you could only like see it in certain places. Okay, if it was like nearby and such? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. That was a bit risky on my part. Oh, now we're talking. I completely misjudged that. That's why I didn't take the life vial earlier. Wait a minute. Yep. I can make this work. Hey! And I don't want gold that badly. <laughs> Dan? Yeah, do we There you go. <laughs> oh man. Uh, doing doing dash jumps in this is nerve wracking. And wow, surprised you <laughs> you got out of that. You know, that wasn't me, that was all Dan. Hmm. There we go. I forget, how do you access the Book of Galomir? Uh, it's, it's like in the tab options, it's like, a. Oh, there it you, is. Yeah, once you have your inventory, it, it's like in the far, far right. Ah, my daring dash didn't go off. He <laughs> big bumped you. I bigger bumped him.
And do you really need to get so close to the edge of that platform to uh, just open that chest? You have to open it from the front. This is this is in Breath of the Wild where you can just open a chest even if it's like upside down. Can't it be though? Hmm. Oh wait, I don't need a life file right now. <laughs> oh, that chain reaction. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I didn't know you could actually shoot the chest with like ranged weapons, so Oops. My tactic was always usually just to, like run up to them to activate and then try to run away. Oh, I forgot that I had that rune. It's a good thing you did. Oh, is that a life bottle over there? Ooh. It is, but you have to like you basically have to do a, a dash jump to get it. Yeah. It, it is nickable with a jump. No. I was uh, aiming the abrupt camera shift. Oh. <laughs> that too, I guess, yeah. It turned into a cover shooter for a moment. I like how he was jumping too. Didn't even know they could jump. Like that. Dead man can jump. Mm. Okay, I know there's one more out there. But where? Well, my Daring Dash died, but I still made the jump. I think it is possible to make the jump even without the dash, but it's... it's, it's like, yeah, it has to be, like, pretty precise, though. Thank you. 
Now it's a Mario Party mini game where you just push them off the edge. Sir Dan wins by doing, well, everything. He does do something. He did a thing. Also, howdy, Zachary. Hey, Chalice Collection. Uh, feels like a Spider-Man game. I'm fighting the Hobgoblin now. <laughs> Am I not using my flaming arrows? Fire always makes everything better. Wait a minute. That's it! Fire! Or? There's the light fountain. Oh, yeah, sorry, I was extremely late on that because I was focusing, but hi, Zach, where? I did say howdy to him earlier for you. So I knew you were pretty enthralled in the medievals. I'm a medieval, if you will. <laughs> Uh, no, Dan was in, in a Smash game, kind of. Unfortunately, he wasn't very good. The PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, Battle Royale, anyway. Greetings, stranger. I am the boatman. It is I who ferry lost souls on their final journey to the land of the dead. But hold, have we not met before? Sir Daniel Fortescue, not you too. Thanks to Zarag's men, he's am up to me eye sockets and lost souls who've woken from the eternal sleep. <laughs> Business hasn't been this brisk since before they invented sanitation. Look, if you help me to gather up a boatload of eight lost souls and bring them here, I'll, I'll drop you off at the sunken town of Melamina. How's that sound? Well, I just so happen to have them. How gracious of you. Makes a change to meet a polite young skeleton after dealing with those filthy zombie types. Hop aboard. Look at you, miss come prepared. This 12 foot tall boatman. Oh, he's paddling us to the Hall of Heroes first. It's a stop along the way. Collecting eight souls. That's a paddling. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, since you mentioned it earlier. Hey, Mr. Fortisque. Hmm? I want to talk with you. It's the Axe Man. Oh, here we go. Why'd you get to go back? Why do you of all people for this game? I do like the axe weapon in this game, like I said earlier. He should be I, blood monarch. It's good for throwing so in, in for attacking. Always of course. I had a pile of slain strewn around me. You, you I mean, it's not super powerful, but it's versatile, so I like it. Changing of the guard and playing croquet with the king. <laughs> Still, I lend you my axe. You a swinger, you a throwhead, she thirsts for a slaughter as much as I. Drink deep of demon blood, my proud beauty. And now we're talking. Well, no <laughs> you know what? Now I realize where God of War got it from. What the axe? <laughs> uh. I'm pretty sure that's always been kind of a Norse mythology thing, though. And I don't think the the hero guy, whoever he was, it's the. Uh, I don't think he was Norse. Don't run with axes. Look, if I wanted your input, I'll axe for it. This is the part where I can't remember what order I did the levels in. I mean, you can do them whenever, whatever order you, you want. You know what, since I don't want him to paddle me all the way to the asylum grounds, let's do the lake. I think you are going to eventually have to go to the uh, the asylum grounds in the asylum, though. Yeah, you do. Lord yeah. You. It must be five hundred years since you were last of my ferry. You don't look a day over four hundred. Now here we are. Zara I want to see you should do that next, because I think that's where you get the other dragon gem. Yeah, I think so. You haven't got your army now. Better to use stealth. We must take care of this first. Beware the watchers. Slay them before they spot you and summon others. I should still equip a proper ranged weapon. The yeah, axe is a proper ranged weapon. Uh, the projectiles are too slow for my liking. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I just like it because I like to save the uh, the arrows for other stuff.
Although in my playthrough of this, of the remake, I did use uh, the arrows quite a bit for this level. Soulstorm. Oh, is that the new Oddworld game that's coming out? Reimagine of Abe's Exodus. Oh, okay. Huh. Oh. I'd be down for that, even though I've yet to actually finish an awful game, but I have them. They can be, especially the first one. I believe I confused them. Or just alerted the entire town. Either way. <laughs>
Let's see it down to 95 on those. Oh boy, do not fall in there. At least not right now. That is one down. The crystal contractions that surround the whirlpool can freeze its dangerously turbulent waters. You will need all of the rune keys to activate the magical machines. That was just a fish flopping around. Okay, I do have the time room. I couldn't remember which rune I picked up. Indicated by purple, apparently.
Oh wait, that's where I came from. Yeah, you're not gonna get another ride from the boat guy. He's my wingman now. Yeah, but he just brings you to one level. <laughs> We can make this work, all right? Well, I'll just say that in Resurrection, he actually does have a bit, have a bit more of a role in that, because he's like the actual Grim Reaper. So in that, he's more of a, I guess, your wingman there. That's what I was missing. Okay, we're back in business. The ancient people of this low vanished town once sought to harness the power of crystals found in the caverns below. Now, Zarak seeks to unlock the secrets of this arcane science. This mine shaft leads deep into the earth to certain doom in the crystal caverns. There you are. Now we can go freeze the whirlpool and survive Narcilla. Even though she's not here. Is that a... Look, I don't get many chances to make Greek mythology references. I was just about to say, is that a Greek god? <laughs> yeah, but this isn't the old God of War games. Actually, I don't even... I don't know if that if that's even in the God of War games. I know you fight Poseidon in God of War 3. That's about all you know. Oh, is... I can recall. At any point in the God of War games, is there a giant whirlpool caused by a monster? Uh, I'm trying to remember if there was. Maybe Poseidon? Or that sea serpent in the beginning of the first game? <laughs> Took me a second to realize what you were trying to sing as a Sardan. I really do have how this area looks, though. Oh, this is beautiful. 
Yeah, they, they, the remake definitely benefits here. Okay, that's where the chalice is. 85%, so I'm almost there. Wow, that was 10%? Damn. What scare in the eye? Ah, I was hoping that would count. Oh well. back here. No wait, here is different from there. Words. There we are. I almost charged directly into the water. Oops. <laughs> Alright, and that's done. I realize it's late in the stream for this, but...
Octopus in old days is by now. Hey, I have something here for you. You like it very much? You want? That puts me at 12 chalices. We've hit the dozen mark. I do find it kind of funny how it's like when you, whenever you get uh, another award from the heroes, they're like, okay, okay. "Here's a thing for you. Do you want it?" And the original, it's like a yes or no question. But in this, you just get it. <laughs> yeah. Why do they bother asking? Exactly. I guess they. I guess they knew in the remake, did not bother. <laughs> <sighs> I. I guess the only reason you would say no is if you were like, because I, I think at, at some points you can't get, you can choose between like two of them, what reward you want from. Mm-hmm. But, but you're but you're getting all of it, eventually anyway if you get all the chalices. So. Yeah, and that is where I'm gonna stop for tonight. Okay. You made good progress. Yep, another four chalices. Oh, am I am I late to the lag party of chalices? Are you gonna break the game yet? He's literally uh, ending the stream now. <laughs> no, I know. That's why I said I'm late. Well, whatever. I haven't really broke the game much, aside from just using the books to freeze one of the villagers. Well, there you go. I think this is general, like, enemies won't... Everything freezes when you read stuff anyway, type of thing. Yeah. So... Uh, thanks anybody who watched that. Um, I know for sure Saturday I'll be doing my usual speedrun stuff. But outside of that, maybe something Friday? I'm not sure yet. I may just do more of this Friday. <laughs> maybe we're not. We'll see. Or maybe I'll be sadistic and do a second day of original PS2 Monster Hunter. <laughs> Like with what, X Link Kai or something? <laughs> or just like how zero is I don't think any monster. Maybe if I play that game for another two hours, I'll be able to afford a second piece of armor. We'll see. Eh, probably not. Uh, good night. <laughs>